Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Very excited to have Bill and Kim on the channel today. They're gonna give us a tour of a 1971 Avion. Thank you, uh, Patrick. Um, thank you for having us on your channel. My name is Bill. I'm Kim. And this is our 1971 Avion. It's not a Airstream. It was a competitor to Airstream. It was a big project. It was a three-year project. We lifted the shell off the body. It was all rotted out inside. The floors were gone. So we gutted it. Me and Kim lifted it, drove the chassis out, and started doing work on the chassis. You know, ripping the wood up and getting down into uh, the frame. And I'm, I'm an auto body tech for the last 35 years, so I knew a lot of that. You know, but it was a learning process throughout the whole entire uh, project. I can show you around the outside a little bit. And, and I'll take you through the inside when he's done. It's a 25 foot Avion. She designed the whole inside. She did really, really nice job. Right here was the furnace. We've, we've relocated the furnace towards the back. So I just put this in. It has a, a charger. Um, oh, it's, it's waterproof. It never had a stripe here. I put this in. It had like orange moldings here and an orange molding on the bottom. And so we painted the bottom, the belly black, and then put this cool stripe in. I kind of like that. Our suspension, these, these uh, valves are sensors. This goes back to the truck and tells me if there's uh, any leaks or any problems while we're traveling. This has a big, huge rubber block in here. Moride used to make it back in the 70s. It doesn't have a leaf springs in it and it doesn't have coil springs in it. It has like a torsion bar. It's independent suspension. This is uh, one of our storage compartments. We have some fold out tables in here for now. These are our stabilizer um, jacks that we put in. We didn't have them. And quick disconnect for a grill. Original awning. Part, uh, awning it's, the awning itself is new. This is the original hardware for it. Many rivets on here. The, the front cap has a thousand and the back cap has a thousand. Airstream in 71, I think had six panels. This has 14, so it's really, really rigid. Um, I reinforced the roof around our, our air conditioning unit and you can literally walk on top of this. Very strong and rigid. Uh, they also, their frames were boxed frames uh, all the way through, it didn't have C channel. So there was a lot of things that, uh, or their cabinetry was uh, really solid wood. And um, a few things that Airstream didn't have that Avion did. This bumper was way out here. I don't know what for, if they had, I was, I'm, I'm eventually going to put a, a tool, 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 like a tool locker in here or something. But I shortened the, I shortened the bumper. I put these backup lights in, in the original spot where the backups are. They do work as backup lights, but if you ever need to come back here, they're fog lamps and they, they're really bright at night. All our windows are original. We just got them to stop leaking. We have a backup camera on the top. If this is plugged in, it's running off of solar. If you unplug it and put regular, it'll run off of a grid. Instant hot water heater. A water full fill up and our suburban furnace. Our 110 outlet here on this side, if you ever need it. If this valve is shut, the gray tank, the 25 or 35 gallon gray tank that I have in here will fill up. But if this valve is open, I have a, a, a bypass, it's a gravity fed bypass, and it'll just come out of here and it won't go into your tank, so it'll keep that pretty clean. These storage areas in 72, they did them all the way around the whole entire trailer um, because you have a lot of emptiness here with this belly pan, which they only did two here. Brand new air conditioning, all Maxan fans uh, throughout. There was a stove here at once. This is just an old exhaust vent. Kept that, sealed it in, so a lot of times you'll get um, a hornet's nest with bees in there. These are, these are new, I put these on. This is our... Uh, our shield, it was a plastic shield, it was all cracked, so I took it to a auto body shop and they sprayed it with Rhino liner. What I like about it is this window. It's, you know, it has this, you can see inside really nice out. It brings a lot of light in. And um, we have uh, our battery, an old battery box. It was, I had to take it off and fix it. I put a, uh, a shower for outside, washing your gear off, or your dog or whatever. Our tanks are the same size as you know your, your grill tanks, so you can exchange them anywhere in the country, so you don't have to go to a refilling station. We have this hitch. I found not too long ago that this bolt, you put a bolt in that hole and this will never go back or pop open. 
So that's just something if anybody has this type of hitch. Um, battery backup for the emergency. Um, all new wiring, all new plugs. For our tank fill here, we have a 35 gallon freshwater tank inside. You can fill it here or you can fill it up towards the back if you have pressure in a garden hose. You hit a valve and it'll just fill the tank without you having to uh, do it manually. We have this here so you can see if you're trying to get in at night. This is the original. It still works. But it just shines out. Over here we have a handle to, to come to come in and this is our deadbolt that we put in. Because these, these doors always flew open actually. This one did at one time and, and caused damage. A lot of them did. Uh, we have an entry step, um, original. Which now I have a locking mechanism on it. So when you put it up it slams shut and it won't come down. This is our, uh, this is new, all new screening in it, the, but the original, the, the, the screen door itself is, is original. This is the door, I painted it black to go with the black theme. It has its bruises and it's dense, but I, I like that, uh, that look. Honestly, this is where the old refrigerator was, now we have a 12 volt. Uh, if it's switched this way, it works off the car while you're driving. If it's switched, this one's switched this way, it works off your, 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 your power grid. Let me take you inside. This is our space, welcome. In the front we have uh, our dinette and the kitchen is in the middle here. We have twin beds in the back and my favorite space, our redone bathroom in the back. In the front here, this is original. Original cabinetry actually all the way through. Um, we painted these. This is the instrument panel. It doesn't work anymore. This still does. I put this all in new. We have cabinetry here with a fiberglass backing, all original. This had a, a, a gaucho bed in here. We, we got rid of that, put this in. Um, we don't have, um, a table yet because we haven't figured out where we want to put that table so uh, as we travel more we'll figure out if we want to put a lagoon table or whatever but we didn't want to jump into that yet so we're still trying to figure that out underneath there's plenty of storage here another great thing about the front here is all the windows so all the natural light that comes in um, you know, this was a gaucho bed when we redesigned it, we redesigned it as a dinette. We wanted as much seating area as we could get where we could kind of lounge out and, you know, be comfortable. Um, like he said, we're sort of not committed to our table yet. Our windows here, uh, we added this layer of plexiglass to the inside to help, help with just kind of some of the heating and cooling and then the privacy shades for, you know, nighttime and whatnot. Um, this here will convert to kind of an oversized queen. We have two panels that drop down and the cushions will come together and lay flat, which gives us lots of sleeping space up in the front. Um, so we can sleep four people here very comfortably. Um, this beautiful window in the front too has the plexiglass in it, um, but opens here. We have the shelf here, which is nice. We can you know, put our drinks here while we're sitting here lounging. There's also storage space in here, little hidden storage compartments. Um, we have cork backed vinyl flooring in here. Kitchen cabinets on the bottoms are just Ikea cabinets. These were the originals that we repainted, all of the original hardware um, that you know opens the hinges. We just replaced the handles, but the bottoms we needed to you know, either figure out how to build or buy. So we ended up opting for Ikea because it gave us a lot of flexibility and we can modify things as we want. And they're, you know, pretty inexpensive. Um, the cabinets, they're full front doors with the hidden drawers. So like we don't have a cooktop you'll see. I have an induction cooktop that hides away nicely in a drawer, can get plugged in. And so it's not taking up permanent counter space, lots of shelving options and it's convertible. So we can modify this as we find we need. Um, he added these magnets here to help hold the doors. So as we travel more and we start to know what we wanna do with it, we can modify our cabinets. Um, down here, you know, just under the sink. And so our trash can, 
cleaning supplies. We have a full-size residential sink, and then we also put in this filtered water drinking spout so that even if we're, you know, on city water or whatever, it's nice and filtered. The backsplash here is aluminum sheet, and then uh, he added a, um, like a 3M vinyl film to it. And over on this side, I, this is original lighting that I just changed uh, the color of the bulbs. Um, this, all our, all our uh, lights have dimmers and shutoffs, so there's no power going to them to conserve on uh, our batteries. We have a 12 volt refrigerator, and we have a wine cooler that works off of 110. It will work off of solar, but if you're not using it, you, you actually use it for more cubic feet. You could put uh, coal cuts in there or milk. This is the bar area type. I like. I put this here so we can have like a blender, do some margaritas. I did put this so far my uh, my bottle opener. Uh, I made this because we had a huge refrigerator here and this had propane exhaust, so the chimney's still outside. So I closed that off and I and I put this in with a dimmer. This will dim down. This cabinet here was over here, so I put this shelf in, built this cabinet and brought it over here. I'm trying to swap the weight at that point. You know, uh, we have, we're, we're concerned that we're putting too much uh, weight on one end, so we wanted to try to even that weight out. My solar is Blue Eddy. Um, I can put external batteries on this and, and power it up higher. Um, so that's where that yellow plug comes in. It plugs into here. We take this out when we're traveling because it's sitting on top of a wheel well. We have uh, our microwave, plenty of storage. Uh, I did all the cabinets on the inside. They're veneered as well. So I tried to stain every single cabinet and make, make it look better. Same on this side. This is where we keep our jackets. These are the boards for the front. And just a little light switch so you can see what you're doing in here. Welcome to our bedroom. Um, we have a privacy curtain that just kind of rolls across to help give the back bedroom, you know, its own space. Um, these are two RV size twin beds. The upper cabinets were the original cabinets. We just painted and then stained just like in the front. He stained the insides, original hardware. Um, lots of, you know, extra lighting. We have reading lights that have charge ports on them. Um, the low profile air conditioner here, it's uh, 13,500 BTUs with a heat pump. So it does do a really nice job of keeping it nice and cool and you know warming it up just enough. Um, these are the controls for the hot water heater and the furnace and the air conditioner. Some charge ports here as well with shutoffs. We painted the ceiling this nice white so it's nice and bright going across. Um, we have the Max Air fan here, and we opted for one that uh, just has the open cover with the latch, so it gets not lots of nice natural light in here. The bed itself will lift up for some storage underneath, so, and then this has access to that compartment outside with these little things to create a nice air pocket underneath so that the mattress doesn't get, you know, condensation and such on it. You're probably wondering if the beds convert. They don't. We ended up deciding to just leave them as two twins. It works out better this way for us. We can just get up and, you know, uh, not disturbing each other, walk through here, um, leaves access to the room that I love the best, that I think we did a great job with, our bathroom. I think we did a pretty good job of trying to take what is kind of a small space and not make it feel too tiny. Uh, full fiberglass end cap here. This is the original fiberglass tub that we painted the shower faucet is on mounted to the side over here with a space up there to clip it to. Um, we opted for a vessel sink because the cabinet was pretty low with the jealousy window here. So this way it didn't feel so low leaning in to, to wash up. This mirror and piece over here for the vanity is original and he stained it. Uh, to match everything else that we stained and then we have the light and we have an additional max air fan with halo light over here and then over here we have we opted for a separate uh, urine diverting toilet so that we didn't have to worry about a black tank this cabinet over here was original to it as well and we just added a countertop to it inside the cabinet um, he has a switch 
so that the 12 volt fan for the toilet can be turned on and off as we need. And then the utility box with the breakers is in there as well. We have vents for the heating system in there. This is the original door that we just, you know, sanded and stained again, all the same colors that we did throughout the trailer. Thank you very much for taking the time today to give us a tour of your awesome restoration. You mentioned shell off in the video. A lot of my viewers might not understand what that involves. Can you take us through that? Yes, yeah, so a shell off is when you disconnect the shell from the chassis. So you go outside, you drill out all your rivets, you come in, you, you literally gut this place and take all these walls down. And then there's ribs inside and you cross them with two by fours and then you tie them all in together so there's no twisting when it goes up. They come across the floor, you bring car jacks in and you jack it up. You jack it up high enough to where you can get cinder blocks underneath it and then roll some beams across it and lay it on the beams and then you pull out the whole entire chassis. It has to be high enough to get over the wheel wells so it's pretty high and, it, and uh, me and Kim did that whole entire thing by ourselves. We did. Um, so after that, then you do it, your, your restoration on your frame and you put new flooring in because all these windows rotted out. Funny story, I had my dog in here while that was all happening and she was under my feet and I sent her out the door and I turn around and there she is because she just jumped through this gigantic hole in the floor, which was really funny. But um, And then after that, you, you, you bring it back down, you roll the chassis back in, you, you bring the shell back down and then you start that whole process in reverse. And that's uh, where we came out with that. And it's pretty scary to some folks to take it that far, but yeah. you do, you should do that because now it gives you a chance to redo insulation, yes. wiring, and you might even have frame rot that you have to take yes, care of. Yes, exactly. The last thing you want to do is do this beautiful restoration, have your frame crack down the middle. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you check that all over, and um, uh, this doesn't have, uh, uh, it has spray foam inside, so it's a factory spray foam so i never had to take any insulation out i had to chop some of the old, old insulation out to get to the to the to the to the, to the structure of it but um uh, in the brochure it said that it's the same spray insulation that they use in nuclear submarines which i thought was pretty funny yeah. and you did a beautiful job on the aesthetics of this trailer on the inside and i like that you know you did change some things in the layout but you kept a lot of them some people got out a trailer and they completely start from scratch and come up with their whole new floor plan yeah. then they realize the systems and electrical and the tanks are all in the wrong spot yes so keeping with almost what the original floor plan was I guess made it a little bit easier yeah yeah um, it just you know really the the main thing that changed here was the bed here having been previously a gaucho bed and making this a dinette um, I think actually probably helped with balance a little bit better even um, because it's now equal on all sides. And now we have more comfortable, you know, more of a comfortable place to kind of lay out. Um, and then at the bar here, having this space over here, we have the ability, when you first came in, there was a wall that went all the way up to the ceiling. So when you walked in, it felt very enclosed by putting just a low cabinet here still gave us plenty of storage space underneath for our refrigerator and all but it made it feel very open when you walked in so it didn't feel like you were walking into such an enclosed space but otherwise the layout is pretty much all the same as it was and that is very important what he mentioned was balance this is a travel trailer still this isn't yes. going to be sitting on a piece of property right. as an airbnb you had to be very mindful on yes. the balance when you're putting this floor plan together yes. Some people don't think about that, and then they tow the trailer down the highway, and it doesn't tow well. No, no. The last no. thing you want to, is the trailer to start swaying. Right. Yeah, that's why we put the bigger cabinet on this side and tried to get some of our utilities on this side. And these IKEA cabinets was that was a ten foot piece, and I could carry it by myself. It's, it's very light. It has right. like a foam insulation on the inside of it. Yeah. Which that's why we really went with that. Yeah. Uh, and one last question I have is the battery system. I like that that's a portable system. You mentioned off camera, it's expandable. So if you need yes. a more battery capacity, you, you could put a, a Blue Eddy cells external batteries for that. You can rack up another five batteries on that and, and run your home on it. So I like it because you can unplug it and take it into your house. You have another Hurricane Sandy or something like that. You you're not tied in and locking everything down. You have shunts. You have all kinds of stuff when you have batteries that are connectors. There's wires. You, you get rid of all that loose wires. So I, I really do like that the portability of it. You can take it out, you know, outside and, and plug stuff in. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to come out today. 
I'll put links in the description if our viewers want to follow along on some of your journeys. This is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. See you next time. Thank you.